I used to only cut my hair so I could see, and then the rest I just let go. That's how the helmet hair became. Was that, did that get chicks or was whatever? I mean, you know, it was more of like, I think I had a girlfriend and it was more of just, I was, I was too obsessed with skateboarding to even like deal with girls. On uh, 23rd and 1st, it's called Peter Cooper Stuyvesant Town okay. in Lower Manhattan, Midtown Lower Manhattan. I grew up here until 1992, okay. and then I went to San Francisco. I mean, it was pretty normal. It was somewhat safe, um, you know. But we were we were also on the edge of Alphabet City, so Alphabet City was a lot rougher at that time. So we would kind of like we would kind of go into Alphabet City and come back, and Alphabet City would also come in here. It's New York City, and nothing is safe. Basically, in the 80s and 90s, right. 70s, 80s, 90s nothing safe. Right. <laughs> I think I learned to watch my back as a kid here when I'm like, probably I'm like eight years old riding a bike around, people are trying to steal your bike. So it's like, you figure out, you know your neighborhood, you know how to get around fast, and some kid tries to take your bike and you can feel faster than him. And that's how you learn. When we go skating, I drink like a quarter gallon of milk thinking that that was going to make me strong. Because of iron? Yeah. <laughs> Finish and milk? Dude, I drink, like skating, and drink like a whole thing of milk. A gallon? Uh, not a gallon, oh, but a you know, like the thin, tall ones? Yeah. One of those. It's not really, it doesn't really go good with uh, sweating. <laughs> In Manhattan, there used to be so many more plazas with like banks and all different types of things. Like even down, like when you go down like Water Street, there used to be these huge plazas of like banks it was like skate parks everywhere. I mean, that's why I got so good at skating banks because of New York City. There was only banks everywhere. You know, I always felt like the banks was the meeting place. And I remember as a kid, Sean Sheffy's in the street doing these huge fucking ollies, and I'm like, I want to do that in my head. And I was just a little rat who was barely, barely ollieing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was one of my, like, people who I looked at to do big ollies. Because I thought, I thought it looked cool. Yeah. I used to always go to the banks and skate because you would see new people there every single day. I mean, everyone. Cause was there as a kid skating and he's a humongous artist. You know, and then you'd see like, one day I was there and like, uh, Jason Lee and Gon just showed up. And I'm just like this, I'm just like, holy shit. Holy shit. I can't even call anyone because you don't have a cell phone or anything. You're just like, you don't have anything you to just take a picture embrace with the moment and you're like, I just watched fucking Gons and Jason Lee skate, and I kind of skated with them because I was trying tricks. And that's like, you know, you can't replace that. There's, there's a memory there that's so, so rad. Do you hate the word streetwear? No, I actually like it. Okay. <laughs> I'm fucking dude. I, I think streetwear is a big part of skateboarding. Yeah. Whoever, like, I know people are like, on and off about it, but this is what we live. This is where this is where I grew up. I grew up on the streets. I skateboard, and I'm a part of skateboarding and streetwear. I mean, you like fashion. You like something, right? Like, you dress yourself a certain way every day. So, I don't know. I think streetwear maybe uh, people think it's something that it's not. For me, it's really been like a lifelong goal to have like a true New York presence and have a New York store. Um, so it's like, you know, like everyone's, everyone always asks like, why aren't you in San Francisco? You know, you, you started the brand in San Francisco. And for us, it's more of, um, we need to conquer New York or at least have our, we need to have a presence in New York before we can even grow the, the world. You know, we have LA, New York, and then we'll see how it goes. And maybe SF will be next. Right. You want to get two co two major coats. Yeah. And, and no matter what, it's like. It's New York City, man. There's more people coming through here. This is, this is the capital of fashion. This is, this is the hub for skateboarding, fashion, everything. This is where trends are made, you know? It's true. It's, this, is, this is the fashion capital. It's pretty fucking crazy. Yeah. Hi. 
Is the free free? This is this is before the vinyl comes off the windows. And this is the apple that Hiroshi did. How long do you think that thing took up? I've been telling him about it for about a year and I think he just rushed it in like two or three months. But today's more of a chocolate Keenan day. Yeah, I'm gonna head over to the demo, so we'll see you at the demo. Where is it? It's on six and housing. Okay. When Keenan passed away, he had a stepfather or someone who had the rights to him. I don't think it was his real father, I think it was his stepfather. And he fucking sued Girl and Chocolate for like years. For the name, the boards, he wanted royalties, he wanted all this shit that wasn't there. Then like a year ago or two years ago, Keenan's sister reached out to me, Hannah, and then now she, she was like, yeah, I told her what we want to do, she approved it, and then now she's starting like a foundation for Keenan. No one was able to do anything with Keenan's image, images forever. No one was able to touch it. And I was like, I was like, fuck that. Like, I'll do it and I'll go to court again. I don't care. Like, you know, I'll fucking, I'll take the battle for this dude.